Hey there, this is Cindy J. Lee for Generation Now. Mental illness is a sensitive topic that is not easily discussed in the Asian community. However, Pacific Asian Counseling Services aims to change that. This nonprofit organization is dedicated to serving people with mental illness through counseling and caring, no matter what your background is. Our special guest today is the Executive Director of Pacific Asian Counseling Services, also known as PACS, Mariko Khan. Welcome, Mariko. Hi, thank you. Oh, thanks so much for being here. My pleasure. We're going to talk about a lot of things today. We're going to talk about your child, your children's programs. We're going to talk about families and also a happy baby campaign that's yes. going on. But before we dive into all of that, uh, for those who are not familiar with PACS, can you tell us more about it? Sure. So PACS stands for Pacific Asian Counseling Services, which tells you right there in our name that we serve all Pacific Asian or Asian Pacific and Pacific Islander uh, groups in LA. So we have three offices and we have staff that speak eight different API languages plus Spanish. So our targeted population, we actually treat children and adults. And what we're very good at is treating people from immigrant or refugee populations with uh, a lot of trauma in their background. And um, we are funded primarily from the Department of Mental Health so the people we treat have severe mental illness or what they call chronic mental illness and mm -hmm. for children it's really severe emotional behavior that gets the notice of teachers or family members so uh, we're not your little counseling center that works with people who are a little depressed and not getting along with their boss no we're working with really severely mentally ill folks and you said it was really common in the Asian community, people who have severe mental issues. And does this, um, y when you see a lot of these cases, do you think it can be prevented if they came earlier for help? It wouldn't have you know, come to that severe condition if they perhaps came when they were just a little bit depressed. Do you think it just led up to something much bigger than that? Well, there are uh, several theories about that. One is that in any population, regardless of ethnicity, a let's say 10 percent of the population will have mental illness the issue for us is when does treatment begin and we always feel that the earlier the treatment the less the severe the treatment uh, the uh, symptoms become right mm -hmm. but um, interestingly enough if you think of schizophrenia which is you know a mental illness that's oftentimes in the news um, these are people who are hearing voices acting very bizarrely most of that, the symptoms start coming out in early, well, I would say, late adolescence. So their childhood looks completely normal. Mm. And then all of a sudden they start having these bizarre behaviors, which at first, you know, you kind of don't know what to do with. And then by the mid-20s is when you see a lot of uh, young people coming out with this kind of mental illness. There, there are so many kinds of mental illness. It's like saying, do you have cancer? Mm. You know, there's breast cancer, prostate cancer. So we're talking about, when we talk about schizophrenia, that's one kind of diagnosis, but there's clinical depression, post-traumatic stress syndrome. I mean, there are many, many kinds of mental illness. And you work with families as well. Yes, well, we work primarily with a, what we call the identified patient, mm -hmm. but you know, if you work with children or even with an adult, you cannot have treatment in a vacuum. And we go beyond that because we work not only with the child, let's say, and the parents, or the couple, the family, and in a lot of our Asian families, it's more than one generation. So you're talking about grandparents, cousins, uncles, aunts, they oftentimes all have a say in what's going on with the treatment. And then we take it even one step further and we say, you know what? If you treat the person, they have to fit back into society. So you really have to integrate them back into the community. Mm -hmm. So we work with a lot of other community organizations to make sure that once the patient is recovered, or what we call client, uh, that they can move back into a more normal life, because that's really what you want. And people recover from mental illness. I think so that's very important to remember that it's curable. Yeah. Um, so what is the Happy Baby Campaign about? What does that promote? Okay, so we have a lot of programs because uh, we work with children mm -hmm. in an age group called zero or birth to five. Okay, and that group are uh, infants and toddlers. And uh, we have some funding for that, but now we're looking to cover the gaps. You know, you have funding, but it's never enough. Mm -hmm. So there are, thing, there are situations that occur, like we'll have a family come in and they don't have enough money for diapers, because we work only with low economic 
um, low income folks. So they or they need um, you know a, a baby car chair. I mean, what do you call it? A car seat, car right? Seat, yeah. I'm not a mom. <laughs> <laughs> and um, as a result, you know, how do we help them? Because if they don't have the diapers, then maybe they won't take the bus to come and see us because they're ashamed or they don't have the money for the bus, although yeah, now we're able. Raising a baby's expensive. It's expensive, yeah. so you know, money could be used to give them uh, money so they can take a bus. So all these little gaps, that's why we decided to have a Happy Baby campaign. But the Happy ba Baby campaign is focused not only on just raising money, but to educate. So that's where we have this calendar aspect. Right. Yeah. Talk so about the, the contest. Well, we're happy baby asking photo for contest. photos yeah. of happy babies and sad babies and angry babies, they don't have to be all the same. And we would like to have babies from different ethnicities. So we're gonna select 12 photos and it will go month, you know, for each month. Mm -hmm. And then each month we're gonna have an educational component like what are the signs to look for in terms of developmental um, delays that you, know, you might be concerned about or how do you hang, handle anger in a two year old or something mm -hmm. like that. So each month, the, the people receiving the calendar will learn something. And the calendar is not to be sold. The calendar is to be given to clients and family members and people who feel that they would benefit from having such a you know, written piece. And it's nice because every month you see uh, you know, something educational. Okay, so uh, you're saying all ethnicities, babies of all ethnicities can enter yes. this contest. Yes. So Asian babies, African American babies, Latino, Everyone. Hispanic babies, you name it. I mean, we have how many different ethnic groups in Los Angeles County? So many. We have so <laughs> many, yes. <laughs> so um, how do you enter? Well, it's very simple. Um, you can uh, go to www.paxsla.org slash contest. Forward slash contest. Forward slash contest, yes. <laughs> I know, we always get mixed up with those two, right? Backslash or forward slash, yes. but let's just forward call slash. slash. On the screen, uh, the oh, information's okay. all on the screen. And then just click, mm -hmm. and there's a, there's a form that you need to fill out. What we're asking is that the baby photo be yours. In other words, you know, you can't take photos of somebody, somebody else's baby unless you have the rights to do so. And then just email us the filled out form, read the rules and regulations for the contest so it's clear in your mind. Because once you send us the photo, we have the right to use it. Now going back to the um, topic of mental illness, um, so I have a question. Like I mentioned earlier, it's hard for Asian Americans or Asians to bring up the topic of mental illness. If there's a problem, they want to hide it, if they express it or just bring it out in the public, they feel like there's gonna be sort of a stigma there. Very much. Yeah, so to those who are afraid to kind of step up and you know, just a, kind of confess, not confess, oh but. Oh gosh, that's, that's what it feels like, right? Yeah, kind of a confess, it feels like a confession, like hey, you know, my name is Cindy and I am, I don't know, severely depressed or whatever. Uh -huh. For those uh, Asian Americans who are afraid to come out and talk about their mental issues, what advice would you give them? The first thing is, is there someone in your family or amongst your circle of friends you can talk to? And unfortunately, what oftentimes happens when people have mental illness is there's a sense of isolation, particularly when you're clinically depressed. Mm -hmm. So the, the thing that you need to do most to reach out becomes the thing that becomes most difficult for you to do. But that would be the first step. The second step is there are lots of, of other agencies, and, and my own, of course, uh, you know, community mental health centers that you can call. Uh, there are suicide prevention hotlines. So there are a lot of resources out there, but I think the first thing that people have to do is to recognize that maybe I have a problem. And that is so difficult for any of us to admit to. Um, and sometimes when your parents or your family is noticing things, they, they don't wanna see it. And um, it takes a big effort for them to bring it up to the person and say, you know, I've been noticing you you don't come out of your room very much anymore, or um, your grades are really falling down, or, you know, you get angry at me for no reason. Mm. Those are some of the signs that you would look for, and I think talk, talk, talk. Mm. Find somebody who can listen. Together, you're gonna find the resources that you need, whether it's something as severe as being hospitalized, which happens only in a few percentages of, of people, 
the other might be having professional counseling, having to take some kind of medication. A lot of the medications people are afraid of, but with therapy and medication, there's oftentimes excellent, excellent results. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, understand that mental illness is just like any other disease. There is a cure. There's a way to recover from it. I think what happens is people get so afraid that they don't want to see it, and then they just really get to the point right, where it's spiral. really difficult mm. to pull them out. Yeah. yeah, and I think it's also important to uh, know when your friend or a loved one is depressed or you see symptoms, you have to be there for them, listen to them, maybe guide them toward the right direction. Yeah. So um, in every way, we'll have to keep our eyes open and not ignore this problem, in, especially in the Asian community. Right. So thank you so much for bringing this up today, Mariko. And also thanks for talking about the Happy Baby campaign. Viewers out there, make sure to enter the contest. Go to paxla.org slash contest, forward slash contest. <laughs> well, thank you so much for joining us today. I'm Cindy J. Lee for Generation Now. See you next time.